So then we'll do a little, um, uh, and then is this the recording started? Yeah, piatic integers sounds great. Okay, okay, okay. So the piatic integers are awesome. Okay, so I'll, I'll just do a, it a little bit. Um, I don't have anything prepared, but I think I know them well enough that I can just tell you what they are. So, um, okay. So, uh, okay, so, so let me, so let's finish off um, uh, cyclic modules. So the characterization. Of cyclic modules. This is all I had to say. So the, the the dilemma that I said last time, so the dilemma was the following, was that if M is a cyclic R module, then uh, M, uh, Okay, let's say a cyclic R module with with M uh, equal to R M for M and M M and M. Okay, um, then uh, M is isomorphic to R mod the annihilator of M as R modules. OK, this as R modules are important, although this is a ring, this thing on this, this side is, is a ring, we're only viewing it as an R module. Like, OK, uh, what are we doing here? OK, let me just say that. Although this is a ring, Uh, we we only care care about its R module structure. Let me just say something else about this. About something like like okay, so let me give you an example. Like just just to to kind of like hammer home why we need to view this as an R module and not a ring. So like there can be so if if R is a domain, here's kind of a weird example. I just want to point this out to you what the heck okay so if r is a domain here's an example and it's not really about cyclic modules this is just about like some weird things that can happen with modules that are not when you view rings as modules so if um if r is a domain and x is non-zero then the module then let me let me say this. Uh, R is isomorphic to XR as R modules. Okay, but not rings, of course. Okay, so it's important that you know when when something is a ring, and you you sometimes have to keep track of its like modulness rather than it's it being a ring. Does that make sense? Wait, where is X from? What X is X? an element, sorry, X is an element of R. Oh, okay, thank you. So in particular, like 2Z is isomorphic to Z as a Z module, as abelian groups. So Z modules, but not as rings. So when you use a module isomorphism, right, you can't just start multiplying elements and stuff, right? Um, the, the isomorphism is usually, um, you know, there's some choice there. Okay, so let's do the proof here. So, um, okay, so so uh, so what we do, the proof is that you just consider a, there's a surjective map, a surjective map. of R modules uh, from R into M. Uh, this is RM given by, let's call this phi, given by you take phi and this thing, this goes to phi of R 
which is just r times m. Okay. And so what's the kernel of this map? So so by by the first isomorphism theorem, by one of the isomorphism theorems. Okay, this is what we call the first isomorphism theorems. I'm not sure what order I wrote them in, but uh, uh, by one of the isomorphism theorems, uh, this means, well, the image of phi is equal to R modulo the kernel, right? So uh, this means M, which is equal to phi of, uh, phi of R, is isomorphic to, and this is where the isomorphism theorem is, this modulo the kernel of phi. Okay, but the kernel of phi is exactly uh, the annihilator of M. So it's all the things that kill M. Okay, does that make sense? The isomorphism here is just you, th this thing is well defined now. Like if, so, if you know, if I if I take something, you know. You know the the phi of so note that uh, if r prime is in the annihilator r of little m, then uh, phi of r is equal to phi of r plus r prime, right? So this thing here on this side, this is a uh, just r of little m, and this thing is r plus r prime of little m, and this is r of m plus r prime of m, and that thing goes away. OK? So uh, that's all I wanted to say about, um, about uh, cyclic modules. Cool? And then, uh, all right. So uh, I'm going to say a little bit uh, about the p-adic numbers now. OK, so um, all right, this is fun. So the p-adic numbers. OK. OK, so let's do uh, let's pick a number. Let's do OK, so pick. So so we're going to pick a prime and then I'm going to write a bunch of numbers down and uh, and then I, let's let's do let's do. Uh, should we do two addicts? Let's do the two addict numbers. OK, we'll actually we'll do a bunch of them. OK, so we'll do this. Two attic. We'll do this one. Five attic. We will do the. 10 of 2 and 10 of 5. OK, this is going to be OK. So we need some other numbers. 3 of 2. Let's do OK, so we need an inverse. So we need let's do uh, 2 fifths of 5. Um, and what else do we need? I think this is pretty good. Uh, Okay, let's see if I can move this over a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to define the p attic norm. So this little subscript two is for the two attic norm, and this little subscript five is for the five attic norm. Okay, um, so the norm of this one is two, is, is one half. This is one, this is one half, this is one fifth, this is one. And this one is five. OK, do you, does anyone see the pattern? So like, what's the rule? So what I'm going to what, what the p-adic norm does, the, the, what the, so give it a prime p, a prime p. Uh, uh, so this is a rational prime, right? Uh, we, we define uh, the p-adic norm norm here so this is going to be a, a new absolute value so i'm going to create an entirely new number system right and it's going to take q and it's going to um uh, this is going to be uh this is going to send to a positive rational number i, I mean we can just say positive real number why not okay so this is this is a this is a p this thing here. Okay, so this is the p attic norm. Uh, 
Okay. And um, okay. And so, so what's the rule? Does anyone see the rule? Picks out that prime. If it has one, then it it, it does a reciprocal. Exactly. So yeah, that's exactly what you do. So so uh, so the rule is the following, right? Is that if um, if uh, m or let's say uh, uh, well let's do it for an integer. Well, we, we can always write let's, let's, uh, if let's see how do I do this. So uh, we can write can always write can always write uh, x in the rationals as uh, x looks like p to the alpha times m, where m, uh, m is in q, um, uh, m is in q, it does not have any factors in the numerator or denominator divisible by p, uh, does not have any factors in the numerator or denominator uh, divisible uh, by p. And then, and, and alpha here is an integer. Okay, so then we define uh, this thing, the norm here of p. So this is the norm of p to the alpha m p. So this is p to the minus alpha. OK, so the idea is, is the more divisible by P you are. OK, so the point is the more divisible by P you are, the smaller it is. So the more divisible by P. By P. The smaller. The number is. Okay. The, the two attic norm of four would be a fourth. Yeah, the two attic norm of a four would be a, the fourth. So if I take four, and this would be a fourth, right? But what's cool about this is that you get things that converge that normally wouldn't converge. Okay, so like, so like two attically. Okay. So if we do one plus two plus two squared plus two cubed plus dot 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 dot, and now we're going to keep going like this. So notice that this this term gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So this thing converges. So this this converges in the two attic uh, numbers. Okay. And uh, this is uh, one minus one over two. I guess this is minus one to in the two attic numbers, right? So this number is just minus two minus one. In, this is another way to write the number. Okay, so I didn't define what the two attic numbers are. Okay, so what? How do you define the real numbers, right? So the real numbers are defined to be uh, equivalence classes of Cauchy convergent sequences, right? So uh, so the the okay so. Some properties, let me just say the basic properties. Uh, of this this piatic norm. OK, so it's actually an absolute value. Value, but it satisfies a, the, a stronger property, it, it, but has a. Has a stronger. Uh, 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 it has a stronger triangle inequality. Okay, and so what you can do is, um, uh, you you so the the, the if I do x plus y and I take it the p-adic norm, so this is for x and y in Q, then this thing is less than or equal to, well, normally you'd say the absolute value of X plus the absolute value of Y, right? But this is stronger. This is called the non-Archimedean absolute value property. 
Okay, so this is the non Archimedean. I'm sorry, is there a distinction between an absolute value and a norm? What's the difference? Uh, a norm, um, a norm is not on a, a a ring. Usually, a norm for me, a norm is is on a um, uh, a vector space, and it respects an absolute value. And so this one, it, it this one respects multiplication. So this one has like x y p. It's like a norm. It satisfies the axioms of a norm, right? It, it except for this additional one. Normally, okay. in the norm, you would have. You, so for norms, you do something like, you know, for C and F and V and V, th this is an F vector space. You'd have something like C, V, and you do this norm. So this is the norm on V. This would be C, F, V. That's what I would think of as a norm, you know, but I'm also doing this off the top of my head. So like. You know, I, I'm pretty sure this is the the the. Uh, um, I mean, you, I'm I'm pretty sure you can probably find places that refer to these as the the non-Archimedean norm as well. It doesn't matter what we call it. It just has it, the important thing is is that it has this multiplication property. Okay. Okay. So um, there's uh, so so there's two things that go hand in hand. There's okay okay. So let me just define uh, the the. The, what what the p-adic numbers are so definition so qp is the completion of q with respect to to um uh so th these are the p-adic numbers Okay, so this is the completion of Q with respect to this this norm here, the p-adic the, the p-adic norm. Okay, and so what does the completion mean? Okay, so there's a couple ways that you could do this, right? You could do completion for a metric space. Or um or, or you could say equivalence classes of Cauchy convergent sequences of Cauchy convergent sequences. Um, and maybe you could do topological completion. Okay, I think these these are the same, and then this will be the same here. Once you have a norm, so it's like finer and finer levels, but they're all the same. Okay, so these are all the same. Okay, so what is weird about this? Okay, so 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 um, so let me let me let me draw some weird stuff now. Okay, so things are close uh, when they have. Uh, uh, when their when their difference is very divisible by p, okay. So um, uh, okay, so so weird fact. Like a hundred and thirty and two or something like that. A uh, hundred and thirty uh, minus two. In what 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 number or what topology? Uh, two two attic. Oh yeah yeah. So this is one twenty eight. And 128 is two to the what, guys? Uh, two, uh, seven, I think. Two to the seven. I'm going to going to trust you. Yeah. So exactly, these are very close to adequately. Okay. And then if you were to if you were to write this out in base two, right? So 130 in base two is what? Two. Uh, plus two to the seventh. So this looks like, you know, um, uh, so so in, in, in the two attic thing, so we have one, uh, so base two, so this is like one, uh, zero, 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 uh, two, did I get that? Uh, one uh, in the two attic, 
Attic Decibel expansion. Uh, I, I don't know about the number of zeros here. Did I, uh, yeah, I don't know. You check check my zeros here. But another way to see this is okay. So this is like the base two version. So um, so one thing that you can see is that like the, they agree at at many decimal places. So the two would be like one zero zero zero. I guess you need a ones place, right? So I was just gonna ask, you mean in base two? In base base two, yeah. Base two and the two attic expansion are the same. So so this is base base two, but we don't um but base two we we view it kind of backwards in that the more divisible by two you are, the higher powers of two are actually smaller. Okay. Flip. Wait, can you explain this a little more? Because I, I'm uh, Wondering why why we're writing one thirty in base two as a decimal? Uh, I mean, it's well decimal by mean we mean two decimal, you know, like like. No, uh, no, no, not, not that part. Okay. I mean, okay. So. Uh, well, why are we writing it like this? Well, we you get a whole new number system. So like just like real numbers, right? You can expand in terms of like, uh, you know, decimal expansion. You can ex expand these. Except for the the you know the lower order decimal places, right, correspond to higher divisibility by two. No, I mean, why why are we not just writing one thirty in binary? Why is it? A... Oh, we're writing it in binary. We're writing it in binary. Yeah, but you have a. a... But I'm writing it's it back. I'm writing it back, the number backwards in binary. Yeah, why why is it being written backwards? Because these are smaller. So two adequately. So two. One yeah. over you, you're applying the norm. Two. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will. No, I'm, I'm. So I write it backwards because, you know, in decimal notation, right, the the farther behind the decimal point you go, right, the smaller the number is. Okay. And so we want it to be the same way in in binary. If we want to write it two adequately, we write it. So that the smaller the number, you know, the higher place you go, the smaller it is in the two attic norm. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna weird. I'm gonna weird you out even more. Let me. <laughs> let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me let's, let's get weirder. Okay. So here's a weird fact. Okay. Um, weird fact is that uh, so the unit disk. in QP is a subring. Okay. So uh, so the, and we call this ring ZP. So, so this is the set of X and QP. So the norm extends to QP, and this is the set of this thing less than or equal to one. Okay, so this is the ring, this is QP. Okay, so there's a way to draw this uh, for for three three attically, we, let's draw the three attic uh, unit disk. Okay, so th so really, okay. So there's this thing. So we'll draw it like this. So there's the three attic unit disk, and then there's a bunch of sub disks that we can write it as. OK, so um, here's that it's a unit disk. And then we have the, 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 the first part of the decimal expansion. So this is like, uh, so you have, um, you can be 0, 1, or 2. 0, 1, or 2. 0, 1, or 2. 0, 1, or 2. OK, and so what I'm drawing here is I'm drawing uh, the, so like in here, these would be elements of the form zero zero dot dot dot. In this one, these would be elements of two uh, two dot dot dot. This would be like two one dot dot dot. Okay, so they are they clump together like this. Okay, this is a three attic disk. Um, okay, this is a consequence. This this thing here is a consequence of. So you have to check this that this is a consequence of this non-Archimedean property. 
right? The fact that, uh, I mean, I guess we could we could do it, right? So let's let's just check this real Can quick. I ask real quick the um, so QP uh, ZP at least in in dumb and foot is called the the p addict the way he writes oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah 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 sorry. Those sorry. are small because like if you're an integer like eight then that's one third right or one sorry one eight is one eighth in exactly two exactly. There's nothing. So that's in the why I thought all integers are small. You only get big when you have stuff in the denominator. Okay okay right right. You only get big when you have stuff in the, uh, you, where is it? Yeah, you only get big when you have stuff in the denominator, like here. Right? So that's that's how things blow up, is that if, you, if you're divisible by this. So all p-adic integers live inside a unit disk then? Yeah, the p-adic integers are the unit disk. Yeah, are that's true. Disk. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they're, they're equal to the, so you do less than, or, sorry, sorry, this should be less than or equal to. And then with infinite series, you actually reach the boundary or something like yeah. that. Uh, the 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 open unit disk. So we can do this MP here, X and QP, where this is less than one. This is a maximal ideal. This is a unique maximal ideal. Okay. These are the things that look like. Uh, so the the maximal ideal are the things that look like. Uh, zero. Um, uh, so, so it's this this one. Right. So they start with zero and then they go blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see. Am I doing that right? Uh, I, I don't know where I'm putting the decimal place, but it, it needs to be less than uh, well, it needs to be strictly less than one. Uh, okay, this is a maximal ideal. That's true. Okay, let me just prove this one real quick for you, real quick. If if this is less than one, and this is less than one, right? Then x plus y here. This is less than or equal to the maximum of this and this. And this is uh, uh, this is one, right? So if you add two numbers, they're still in there, and then if you multiply two numbers, it's still in there by, by multiplicativity. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Okay, Jeremy, check this out. Okay, here's something you're not gonna like, but I like. I know it's kind of cool. You'll like it. You'll love this. Okay, so lemma. Okay. Uh, so let um, uh, B so so uh, let B be a ball in the pianic uh, numbers. Okay, so every point. is the center of the ball. So all the points are equally valid to be the center of the ball, right? So, so you know, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So every single point here is the center of the ball. Um, so like, uh, okay, uh, so so let's see if I can do this off the top of my head. So like, okay, so you have BR of X. So this is the set of Y such that uh, X minus Y piatically is less than or equal to R. Okay, so if this has Y naught in here, right, let's look at B, BR Y naught, okay? B, R, Y not. Okay. So my claim is that, uh, uh, that this is equal to B, R, X. This is the claim. Okay. So if this is in here, so let's take some Z in here. So Z minus Y. Okay. Uh, or Z minus, okay. So, so we, we know, so we know, uh, Z minus X 
this is less than or equal to R. OK, so let's do Z minus Y here. So this is equal to Z minus Y plus uh, 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 X uh, minus X. Right, OK, so this is uh, so we can write this as X minus Y plus Z minus X. Uh, is that what we want to do? Uh, okay, so this is Z minus Y, X minus Y. Oh yeah, Z is in here and Y is in here. So this is less than or equal to the maximum of this thing. Uh, X minus Z P. Okay, and then this thing here, this is less than or equal to R, and this is less than or equal to R. So this is less than or equal to R. So I showed that, you know, everything in this ball is contained in this ball, and then conversely, right? So this shows, this proves, we proved that BR Y naught contains BR X. Okay, and the same thing goes the other way. Right. So the you know, every point is the center of its own ball. So this is like this is this is an example. Topologically, these things look like Cantor sets. Like they're they're like uh uh Cantor sets. Okay, so let's look at uh the uh, okay, any questions on that? Okay, so let's look at what Rick was asking at the very beginning, right? Uh, so he said, do we view them as power series or, or the p-adic integers? So Z, ZP, so these are the things, so these things are, are look like, um, uh, these are the p-adic numbers with no denominators. So they, they actually can be written as a0 plus A1P plus A2P squared plus A3P cubed plus dot dot dot, where these AIs are in, um, these are in uh, 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 0, 1, P minus 1, like so. So you can always write them like this. And, um, uh, and one way to see this, is, so 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 this kind of like idea that you successively approximate by, so like these these things are 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 better and better approximations, right? So better and better and better. Because the bigger power of p, the smaller it is. Exactly. Yeah. Of a in the CP. Okay. But there's another way to do this is that uh, ZP, it turns out that ZP is isomorphic to the inverse limit of Z mod P to the N, okay? And then as you recall, this thing is a subset of the product of Z mod P to the Ns. So this is how you write an inverse limit. So an inverse limit is the same thing as a limit, right? Um, and it's equal to, this is equal to the collection of, uh, let's say, um, uh, let's, we need to use new letters. B0, B1, let's see, let's do B1, B2, B3, B4, et cetera. Uh, so this is in the product, right? Uh, such that the that uh, that b i plus one mod p to the i is equal to b i uh, in z mod p to the i. So you just have a sequence of numbers where one thing. So like like okay. So in in this case, in in, in correspondence with this thing here. So b b one is A0. B2 is A0 plus A1P. B3 is A0 plus A1P plus A2P squared, etc. so on and so forth. 
But you only really need the equivalence class. So this is mod P. This is mod P squared. This is mod P cubed, etc. So you can always take a P attic number and reduce it mod P, right? P to the N for any N you want. And it's actually a system. You can view it as a system of things mod P to the N for, for every N. Right, so it's just a, a big compatible sequence of, of things mod P to the N. OK, so this is like a second. So there's kind of so there's so there's just kind of recap. There's kind of two descriptions of the p-adic integers, right? So so as kind of a recap. There's there's two descriptions. Of ZP. The first description is as the unit disk. In um, as the unit disk in uh, in QP, uh, the closed unit. Let's see. Let me, let me write this up better. Closed unit disk in QP, and the second thing is as the inverse limit. Uh, so the inverse limit, I, I, I'm just going to say this again, it, categorically speaking, this is just a limit, right? Uh, it's just the inverse limit like this, okay? So there's there's two descriptions of the p-adic integers, okay? So they are, um, there's, so ZP is a local ring. So this, this means, uh, so a ring, did I say what a local ring is? I, I think we were going to get there, the you know, unique maximal ideal. You might have briefly mentioned it, but we haven't really gone into it yet. Do you yeah. mean QP yeah. is because it has uh, or, or? Well, QP is a field. Oh, so, right, right, OK. Uh, so, it has, so remember, maximal ideals uh, can't be the whole ring, right? And so fields, the only ideals are 0 and itself. So I guess there is a unique maximal ideal. It's just a silly. It's the zero ideal, right? OK, ZP is a local ring. Uh, the maximal ideal. MP is the maximal ideal. Um, is is the unit disk. The, the open unit disk. OK, and so this is um, uh, so this is the first example of what's called a complete discrete valuation ring. Wait, what well, wasn't that your definition of ZP though? MP or no? Uh, MP here. Um, yeah. That, well, uh, yeah, that is the definition of MP, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just wanted to remind you it's a local ring, and this is what the maximal ideal is. I mean, I guess I didn't. So the maximal ideal is not itself, though, right? Uh, what, what, what? Uh, this ZP is, is the closure of the disk. This sorry. is the unique maximal ideal. So this this thing here is the unique maximal ideal. I'm saying that this is the unique maximal ideal in ZP. So ZP goes all the way out to equal one, right? I, I guess yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. ZP okay. goes equals equals. Yeah. So it is a subset. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a sub. It's a proper subset. Yeah. And this is this is um uh yeah this is an ideal right so um it it does not contain one for example right this does not contain one um this is what this is what's called the complete discrete valuation ring. So there's there's a valuation here. So sometimes we can do there's there's um uh we can define an ORD function right from a ring into z greater than or equal to zero union infinity. And then uh, so this is what's called a valuation, and it satisfies axioms. Value would be like an is valuation an equivalence class of orders or? Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm so I, I I'm 
calling it, this is just a single function, right? It's a function that does this, right? From the ring to, to here, right? Um, uh, so that's what evaluation does. It has to satisfy this. It has to satisfy this, I think, is equal to infinity. But the, the axioms are, I don't know what the other axioms are, but the axioms are such that, uh, axioms are such that, are such that, that uh, if we define, oh, there's the maximum, there's this minimum thing. Okay, I don't remember there's another one. Um, or x plus y is greater than or equal to the minimum of the ord of x and the ord of y. Okay, but the axioms are such that if we define this thing, uh, x to be, um, let's call this rho to the minus ord x for uh, rho a real number and rho bigger than one, then this then this thing here, let's call this, I don't know, uh, ord, I don't know, this thing, then this thing here, then, uh, so if we define this, then this thing here is a non-Archimedean absolute value. And if this ring is complete with respect, so this is what's called the discrete valuation. Uh, so this is what's called the valuation. Um, it's a dis so the fact that it's discrete, right? The discreteness, the discrete part of this means the image of the valuation. is uh, uh, is z so uh it is uh so you can either do it on the field um or the ring right and if i were going to do it on the field right then you would do q here or sorry you do all the z's so on the field you know if we use the field to define the field to define the valuation then uh, we would have something like ORD, and this would be from the field F uh, cross, uh, F cross to Z. Uh, and then this would be a group homomorphism. Okay. Anyway, so the discreteness has to come from this. If, if, if you know, non discrete valuations. Uh, replace you can replace this with you can replace this with other ordered abelian groups. Like R or some. Uh, worse than that. Yeah, yeah, R. Uh, R is a good example. Um, you could do like R plus R, and then put some sort of weird ordering where you like have some tie breaking rules, right? Um, yeah, those are those are non-discrete valuations. Um, yeah, this is evaluation. So we we said so we have evaluation ring. We answered what this is. It's discrete because it's here. It's complete because it has all the limits in this topology. So complete means, you know, uh, complete means has all the limits in this topology. OK, so what's another example? Well, OK, so that's I think that's my spiel on p-adic numbers. Um, and then I will stick around for a little bit to answer questions. Um, uh, maybe here's a here's something to think about. OK, so what's a valuation on this ring? So what's a value? So so. What valuation can I put here? The degree of the polynomial. Or? There you go. D the degree. So the degree could you would give you one, and then what would you get if you completed with respect to that valuation? Put double 
brackets or something. Yeah. Maybe. So you could do the degree or you could do the order of vanishing with respect to T. So the degree is like the order of vanishing at infinity. But you could define this as like, you know, uh, the largest power, you know, uh, largest power of T. T dividing f of t. Okay, this gives you a norm, and this leads you to the formal power series, if you were to work this out. All right, so like this, if you were going to do this, you get a norm, and then this is uh, the completion With respect to the norm would, would lead you to uh the the formal power series ring so like anytime you have one of these discrete valuations right you can complete it and then you can make some sort of topological ring where you have this these unit ball these unit balls and stuff the the, the you know this, this these not this not non-archimedean geometry going on all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording here, and then I will stick around for questions. Feel free to go if you want to go. Um, uh, all right, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Is this covered?